Dan and Wilhain, I'm here to talk about water in Star Engine. So, water is a huge part of both of our games, Star Citizen Squadron Force 2, and we wanted to give it a major upgrade. We were going to set three ideas that we wanted to impart on our water. We want it to look as good as possible, obviously. We want it to look realistic. We want it to be beautiful. We want it to be in motion constantly. It should always be moving and always be reacting to everything around it, whether that be players or objects or vehicles. And we wanted this to work on the whole scales of all of Star Citizen, all the way down from footprints in puddles to enormous ships crashing into the ocean. I'm going to talk about our updates to the water rendering first, and then we'll move on to that other stuff I discussed. So first of all, the water shaders, particularly the ocean and the river ones, were in dire need of a major upgrade. They were currently using a technique called deferred shading, which is really fast and fantastic for opaque objects, but does not translate well for transparent ones, which of course water is. So the first step that we made was to transition to forward shading. That allowed us to introduce more physically based techniques, such as proper lighting, reflection and refraction. It in allowed us to integrate the atmosphere properly into our water lighting setup. And it also meant that we could get more fun, more fun techniques, such as uh, wave crest backlight scattering as adding better foam rendering, which includes half tone blending, surf surface haze, and much more detailed bubbles on the individual bits of foam. I've got some examples of that here. In this particular screenshot, you can see the icebergs in the near frame. You can see we're refracting the iceberg underneath. It's correctly refracted. In the mid frame, you can see that the iceberg is reflected back onto the water. That is now accurate. We weren't doing that properly before. Here you can see our accurate water lighting from this really beautiful screenshot of the Gladius over the water. I love this one. So this is the objects under the water have been correctly lit, which is new. And then we are applying the lighting changes from the, um, the specular highlights on the surface and also considering the lighting from the suspended particles in the water, depending on how deep and dense the water is, which gives us this really beautiful effect. Uh, this screenshot just looks good, but what is going on is that it's demonstrating that the atmosphere and the water are sorting properly. This looks like everything is normal, but it's challenging to implement with forward rendered water and uh, proper ray march clouds like we have in game. Props to Alan who works on all of this. I, d I did the, the next bit. Uh, and here we can see the wave crash light scattering. See how the sun is coming across the back of those waves and it's lighting up the, su the suspended particles in them. It just looks gorgeous. Here we have the multi-layered foam. And from a distance, we have both surface foam and subsurface foam rendering correctly, looking really, really nice. I've just got a video here before and after. First of all, uh, this is our, our lakes on Standard 4. Uh, next, we have water volumes on Orison. There you go. And this last demo, this is a Clio on the Stanton system. This is what it currently looks like in game. And I think you'll agree, pretty dramatic difference. So the next bit that I want to talk to you, that me and uh, the team of Planet Tech and Graphics have been working on, is of course water surface simulation. This has been an absolute pleasure to work on. So we had a few aims for this. We wanted it to be multi-input. We want physics to influence this. We want our MFX system to influence this. We want bullets. We want everything. We want high concurrency. You guys, it's a sandbox game. You're going to break it. You're going to stick a thousand, pi a thousand picos in our puddles. It's got to work. And it's got to be scalable. It's got to work from the tiny scales to the footprints in the puddles, all the way up to, as I said, giant, crashes, giant ships crashing into the ocean. So the technique that we chose for this is a, a form of surface wave propagation. It's GPU based, it's highly realistic at a low cost, and it can be scaled for waves of different amplitudes. So we can have all of that built right in just by adjusting a few constants. I've got a demonstration here. We're going to have the player walking through the puddle. As you can see, as he steps, you get a bigger ripple. But even as he's stepping, the toe is being dragged through the water and moving the water accurately. This is not a cop out. We're doing this in 3D. You see as I'm jumping. And then this next demo, we're going to fire some, some bullets. This is a bit loud, this one. Right, the one more thing that we had to look at. So it's all well and good, this working on a puddle, but Star Citizen is not made of puddles. It's made of oceanic planets. It's made of everything. We needed to make this multi-scale. So we, yeah, we wanted the water near and far, not just in a square around the camera. We wanted lots and lots at once. The solution we picked was a multi-region water sim. Now, this was really, really tricky to get right, but I really think we have now. This basically means that we can dynamically allocate all of the simulation regions depending on what is colliding where and what resolution we need at what parts of the screen. We can optimize this very heavily to make sure that you get what you want to see at, at the right time. We still need to get that information onto the water, though, and that's a bit trickier. 
So what we devised is yet another set of regions. Now, the regions are slightly different. The simulation regions need to happen wherever something is contacting the water, and that needs to happen regardless as to whether you can see it, because if there's a collision going on there, I look away, and then I look back. If it stops going and has to restart, that looks bad. Whereas the water, we only need to know the total result when it's actually in view. So we have these new regions which cover all water in view. And the beauty of this is that we can use this for multi-input and multi-output systems. Anything can influence our water, whether it be the simulation, whether it be weather, whether it be VFX. And then anything can be affected by water now. So the water rendering reads from this. But then we can also spawn VFX particles from wave crests. We can add screen space effects. We can have a line across your visor. We don't have this yet, but it's accurate to the displaced water in front of you. We've got this technology now so we can use it to influence any of our work going forward. And here's a really good video of some of it in action. Just I'll just let that play. This is a debug mode. Essentially, we're moving a sphere of basically infinite mass through the water. And as you see, if we pan out a bit and we make our sphere a bit bigger, we get a much different result from the sim. Spawning the foam properly. It looks really nice. Really happy with this one. So what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to turn on the, the debug mode so you can see where the regions are. You see we've got these grey boxes. They light up green when there is a hit inside the box. We've also got different sizes going on. If you look near the shore there, there's a big cluster of text. That is a whole bunch of other regions because there's some stuff floating there causing little ripples that we can't actually see. And as you see, these scale properly. We can add the results from multiple sizes of simulation together and they influence and interact with one another accurately. You see those big waves crashing over the little sim there. It, yeah, it, it works pretty nicely. <laughs> I've gone ahead of my subtitles, but I'll just let that video play out. So, what does that look like when we bring it all together? What's it going to look like in game? Now, you did see a little bit of this in the Star Engine trailer, but actually, I think this video does a little bit more justice to it. So, I'm just going to let that play out for you. <laughs> in a second, you're going to see the wake start to happen behind us there. And from the cockpit perspective, water droplets on the glass, thrown up from the water sim. This is what I'm talking about using multi-output. And that's us. Thank you so much, Sitcon.